Uh, this is Mark Cook with Kid Planes Magazine. Welcome to my glass star. I'm going to take a quick flight today to show you what the GI-275 EFAS from Garmin looks like in flight. They've actually got two installed here. One is an attitude indicator, or an ADI. The other set up is a multifunction display that's being fed all sorts of data from a GPS and ADS-B. I'm going to take a look at what that's like actually in flight. Before we do that, let's go back to the bench just a little bit. We'll talk about the configurations and the way the GI-275 is put together. And we'll come back here and show you some flying. Stay with me. All right, before we do too much more flying, let's take a look at the GI-275 box itself. Now, obviously, this is a pretty robust sucker. There's actually three versions of it. There's a GI-275 base, which is uh, meant to function as an MFD. There's a GI-275 with the Atahars. And then there's also a version that has autopilot outputs. These are analog out autopilot outputs for some really old general aviation autopilots, including things like Cessna 300s. So what we have here is an Atahars unit. You can tell that because it's got the pitot static. It's also got the 278 pin connectors. Now, this provides not only power, but it provides communication to the rest of the airplane, including a high-speed HSDB uh, database, which you can talk to Garmin GPSs, but there's also airing 429 channels, there's RS-232 channels, there's a whole bunch of analog uh, voltage stuff on here as well. So it's really designed to talk to a lot of products that you might see in the general aviation aircraft. The other thing is under here, there's a battery. It's a backup battery. It's required for the attitude indicator. It's not required for the MFD. A couple of things to note before we go back to flying. You'll, you'll see that the, the knob set is on the lower left-hand corner. That's really designed for certified aircraft where there's probably a cutout or a notch, maybe an altimeter cutout, something in this corner uh, that they wanted to take advantage of. The whole idea behind uh, this design, the physical design from Garmin, was to make it easy to install in general aviation aircraft. Now, it's really not a big deal once you get used to kind of reaching across the instrument to grab these knobs. And I will say, they're really nice and robust. All right, so that's a better look at the box itself. Let's go back into the airplane and see how it flies. All right, well, welcome back. We're going to take a look at this in a couple of different formats. We're going to start with the attitude indicator, the ADI. Now, you have to have the version of the uh, GI-275, so it has the internal Atahars. That includes MEM sensor, pitot-static uh, connections, and actually, like all of them, includes the VFR GPS. So what you're going to see on the touch screen is a, a variety of things pretty well uh, integrated into a, uh, a very small display. I think Garmin did a really good job getting a lot of data into display. Like a typical EFIS, on the right-hand side, you have altitude. Now, what's different about it, and we'll show you this in climb and descent, is that the VSI is a really small magenta line that's along the right-hand edge. And that actually works fairly well because it's bolstered by a digital numeric display. It tells you what your VSI uh, is at the time. So between those two, you can really put it together and get an idea what the airplane is doing. Obviously, along the bottom, we have a, a magnetic heading uh, indicator. Now, if you happen to have a version of the uh, 275 that is connected to, a, say, a GMU-11 magnetometer. This will show magnetic heading. Along the left-hand side is airspeed. Now, that comes with all the color-coded bands. It also has a cool thing. You can actually bug an airspeed, so you can plug that in and uh, set a desired uh, either climb or descent airspeed, whatever works for you. The display itself, obviously, has, is your basic attitude indicator, but you can opt for synthetic vision, as you're seeing here. Now, along with the synthetic vision, you're seeing a terrain on the background. You're seeing the normal sky pointer or ground pointer cues. Those are adjustable uh, depending on your preference. And you're also seeing the slip skid ball. As on a G1000, that's the, the little trapezoid that's just below the, the triangle at the top of the display. The other cool thing about the GI275 when it's set up it with synthetic vision is you get your path marker. So the little green dot in the middle is telling you where the airplane is actually going rather than where it's pointed. Now, as we've talked about, the GI275 is a touchscreen display. Now, the question is, on a small instrument like that, is that really useful? And it turns out that it is. So on the 275, you can adjust several of the parameters. First, by touching the little uh, area on the screen. For example, I'm going to change the altimeter setting. You can press that, turn the knobs, and that makes the change. The same thing applies with a heading bug, uh, with an altitude reminder, or with an airspeed bug. You tap the little rectangle in that corner and make the settings using the knobs. Now before I go over to the multifunction display, I want to mention that 
The GI-275 is set up for a variety of instrument types. One of them that we don't have in this airplane is the engine monitor, which is actually very fully featured. It does require a remote engine uh, module to make work. All right, so let's talk about the multifunction display. You can have this set up for any number of screens, and I'll kind of walk you through the way I've got it set up on this particular airplane. The first is the map screen, and this actually shows moving map. You can scale in and out using the small knob. And it actually can get pretty complicated there. It does a nice job of adding a moving map display. As you can see on this display, I'm also overlaying traffic. Let's go to the next screen. That's the HSI map. Now this is pretty cool. You can, uh, in this particular instance, you can see I've got a little weather around me. So this is a, a traditional HSI presentation. I'll turn the airplane, we can take a better look. It's actually overlaying uh, ADSB or TSB weather and uh, traffic. So really in one place you have a ton of information. Now one of the things you can do with the touch screen is if you have a course to set, you can press the button to set the course. In this case we're not navigating to anything using the VOR, so we're not going to get that. The other thing is the small knob will in this case do a heading reference. So if you're connected to the autopilot, the autopilot will fly that, otherwise it's a visual reference to follow a heading. The other option is a dedicated traffic page. Let's uh, zoom out and see if we can find some traffic. There's a somebody 700 feet below off to my right, right behind. We can also have a dedicated weather page. That also is scalable. In this case, I'm showing the, uh, the radar returns, and I'm also showing the weather conditions at the stations around me. We have a pretty cool terrain view. Now, I'm up high enough that I'm not really hitting any terrain, but this is a dedicated terrain page. This is a basic HSI page, something if you really want to drill down and make it very basic. There's an old school CDI. Let's give you something to put on it here. All right, so that'll show us a little bit till we have a GPS showing on the terminal. Let's go back through. The HSI will actually show that. We'll make a turn around back toward the airport. The terrain will show this. So again, here's our uh, weather. That's going to show our course guidance from the GPS overlaid onto the weather. Back to our traffic page. Looks like we've got a little bit of traffic near us. Here's our HSI map page. Now something to note that the heading is normally the, the active one. If you want to change the range, you've got to push it. You've got to touch it to change the range. And then basic, back to our basic map page. All of these in this case are being driven by the GNX 375, which is providing the TSB weather uh, as well as the uh, navigation information. All right, so that's a little bit of flying with the GI-275, both as the ADI and the MFD. Hope that gives you a little insight of what these things are uh, like to live with. It's a really, really nice instrument. Probably a little expensive for the experimental guy, and probably has a lot of connections that a typical home-built won't use. But uh, as a platform for a really, really nice small-scale Leafus, uh, it really impresses. The display is amazing, great resolution, terrific brightness. The thing feels really robust, and it's got a ton of capability. So whether or not uh, this is uh, at the right price point for you, Garmin has made a really, really nice unit here. Appreciate you watching. Thanks for coming along for the flight. I'm Mark Cook with Kit Planes Magazine. We'll see you next time.